Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access Trader.com. Uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. I uh, hope everybody is uh, achieving their goals, or at least taking necessary steps uh, to achieve their goals. If you are uh, brand new to trading, if you're looking for a process, again, I've been doing this for 25 years. I trade primarily mega cap uh, technology uh, pivots, uh, the PS60 theory, again, something I developed uh, in 2012. And if you are interested, there is uh, a link uh, below to kind of kick the tires for 30 days, see if it's a right uh, fit for you. Other than that, uh, thank you very much for your viewership. If you could be so kind and click the like buttons, you know, just all you just pretty pretty much help out the channel. Uh, and I will hopefully continue to provide uh, value. So let's talk about the tape. Um, if you watched last night's video, we talked about uh, we talked about several things. Uh, the risk risk money continues to pour in. You can see it all over the place. Um, you saw a lot of names in the last couple of days test their five-day moving average uh, along with the QQQs from the macro side. And once in a while, you know, once in a while when the trend is so euphoric, right, or a trend is so aggressive to the downside, you know, in each uh, direction, eventually something happens and there is a seller strike on the way down, okay, when stocks just or can't be sold anymore, and there's nobody left to sell stock, and there's something called a buyer strike. When a stock or a market is in, I don't want to use the word final stages, but kind of a pause area, right? A pause area of the tape where the market potentially could be tired. And when you look at uh, the last five, six days, obviously uh, the catalyst has been the election. And now that the euphoric nature of the market is pretty much come and gone, the question is, is this one of those scenarios that the market's tight? Okay, I don't want to use the word rolling top, right? I don't want to use that. I don't want to use the word blow off top. Again, nobody's predicting tops. Nobody predicting bottoms. Only that's a social media thing. Nobody cares about being right or wrong. We just try to put ourselves in a situation that we're capitalizing on the reality that we have in front of them, in front of us, not the reality that we want. Yes, uh, everybody would love a continuing bull market every single day, every stock goes up 20, 30%, that blah, 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 blah. But that's just not the way it goes. And if you look at the last three days, right? The last three days, and we'll use the QQQs as a barometer. But if you look at the last three days on the QQQs, you'll notice that the market closed with three straight red candles. What does that mean? It's basically in layman's terms, if you're using any some simple form of Japanese candlesticks, is just basically the market closed lower than the open versus the previous other three days going into the election. And after the election, the market closed with green candles were higher close than higher than, than higher open. So is this one of those blow off pauses, rounding pauses? Again, I don't want to use the word top, or is this just the digestion, a simple digestion cycle that in the next couple of days the market could go sideways and then we start resuming. Uh, back to all-time highs? The answer is yes, yes, and yes, right? Again, this is why we always talk, talk about be prepared. Be prepared to the upside, be prepared to the downside, but don't put on blinders and think the market can't go lower. It's stupid, right? It's stupid, it's naive, uh, and it's a novice way of thinking. It's a retail way of thinking. It's like the other day, you know, when Tesla put up a 100, 110, 120 point move, somebody goes, well, why can't the stock go to five? You know, why can't the stock go to 500? Maybe it does. It's like it'll go to 500 tomorrow, right? So you got to be, you got you to take off the retail glasses. You got to, you know, stop sipping the euphoria punch and just realize no matter how strong the stock or overall ge uh, generic market move is, eventually buyers will get tired. And that's kind of what we're seeing, right? We're really seeing that. And if you look at the the three biggest movers, right? Think about the three biggest movers in the last four or five days. Okay, first one was Tesla, right? First one was Tesla. Has gone absolutely gangbusters. Has gone from uh, two thirty eight uh, to two three sixty in a matter of a couple of weeks, right? Uh, if you look at Coinbase, 
You know, Coinbase went, what, from 176 to 334. If you look at MSTR, right, MSTR, MSTR, just in the last couple of weeks, has gone from 220 to 380. So you can make an argument these were the three biggest euphoric movers uh, in the last, you know, week, week and a half or so. And what's the problem, right? It's not like the NASDAQ was down, you know, 400 points for these things to, to get hit today. And again, maybe I don't want to use the word hit, but kind of reversing today or kind of running out of gas. But that's kind of your first clue, right? When you have a roundabout pause or a roundabout top, right? Sellers are going to get tired, right? Excuse me, buyers are going to get tired and they're going to get tired of not stocks that can't rally. They're going to get tired of stocks that can rally. So today we saw a little bit of a chink in the armor, a uh, big reversal today in MSTR, big reversal today in Coinbase. Uh, and this is coming with uh, Bitcoin still at 90,000, right? 99, 2000, whatever it was. And we saw now uh, a second consecutive day, right? Second consecutive day or third consecutive day of lower highs, lower lows, on Tesla, and it, titch, it hit the five-day moving average and bounce. You guys remember we had the whole conversation yesterday. If Tesla comes into the five-day moving average, you might want to consider a long there. Well, again, Tesla did bounce, right? Tesla absolutely did bounce. The problem is Tesla, and again, we'll kind of segue into tomorrow's session. The problem with Tesla is it's $14 off its highs today, right? And it's only about $6 off its low. So it's kind of a no man's land. And before we get to Tesla, let's talk about the overall macro environment, what you should definitely be uh, be uh, ready for tomorrow, right? Again, I trade both sides of the market. For me, I don't care which way the market goes, up or down, as long as I know there's levels. So here's what we have to pay attention for for tomorrow. Let's start off with the Qs. The QQQs, uh, the previous day's highs got rejected of 515. Everybody see that? 515 is the highest from the last couple of days, okay? It's been rejected now back-to-back -back days at 515. However, right, and this is kind of where we go into tomorrow. However, we are, we've been defended, or QQQs have been defended 509.80 for back-to-back -back days. If you look at the low from two days ago, it was 509.83. The low from today was 509.95. So 515 to the upside, 508, excuse me, 509.80 to the downside. One of these areas, right? One of these uh, channels has to confirm. It's not going to just go sideways for the rest of our lives. So whether it's tomorrow, whether it's the next day, whatever the case may be, eventually, if the bulls want to continue this, you know, this this rabid move into the fourth quarter, we're going to need to get back above five fifteen. If the bears want to get a little bit of relief, right, getting squeezed for the last, you know, week week and a half or so, the sellers have to reclaim back the five hundred nine eighties level. They do reclaim back the five hundred nine eighties level, like I talked about. In last night's video, it will give up the five-day moving average, and then we have a measured move going all the way down to the 10-day moving average of roughly 506, 507. Again, something definitely, definitely to keep an eye on both sides. If you look at individual stocks, again, let's talk about them, right? Tesla, like I said, it's $14 off its highs, and it's about $6 off its lows. As you can see here, it stopped perfectly, right? And for all you guys who took the bounce today off the five-day moving average, you know you caught a $10 bounce, right? The stock went up $10 from the five-day moving average. Again, we discussed this in last night's video. Now, here's playing devil's advocate, okay? With all the three, you know, 75, 400 calls, 450 calls, 5,000 calls, 8,000 calls, well, what happens if it loses the five-day moving average, right? Think about that. The market doesn't have to go, right? We would like it to go. We would love it to go. If you're long, you know, at any time in the last, you know, week, of course, you want to see Tesla at $400, $500 a share. But who's to say it, it, it doesn't give up the five-day moving average? Because if the Qs give up the five-day moving average tomorrow, well, what's stopping from Tesla? So guys, watch this thing. If Tesla loses the five-day just the same way the Qs lose the five-day, guys, look how much room you have down. You have moved all the way down to 301, uh, which is the 10-day support. Again, have to watch it. Uh, look at look at NVIDIA, right? With all the call buying we've seen. And again, they report uh, in seven days. And again, I don't know what's going to happen on their earnings. We, we're starting to see a lot of call buying to the 50s, the 55s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the $2,000 calls. Exaggerating, right? But for, for from the trading aspect of it, right? And you can see every single stock is kind of setting up the same way for tomorrow. From the trading aspect, well, what happens again? Two days in a row... NVIDIA has held a five-day moving average. Well, what happens if NVIDIA gives up the five-day moving average tomorrow? Again, that's the whole point. Be ready on both sides. Don't be, you know, again, if you're if you're an investor 
this again, the channel's not for you, man, right? It's not for you. I don't know where the video is going to be a month from now. We're trying to, we're trying to take advantage of tomorrow. Okay. That's all it is. We're trying to take advantage of tomorrow. Um, you know, your opinion in the video can it go to 200 after earnings. Absolutely. Could it go to 100 after earnings? Absolutely. Again, I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller. My name's not Miss Cleo. Uh, and the point is, I'm not trying to guess. I'm not in the guessing business. I'm in the con con like collecting data business and trying to win my interval for tomorrow, not for next week. So it's super important to go down through the list of the NASDAQ 100 names, especially it's my specialty. And if we start losing the 509.80s on the Qs, everything is going to get pulled. And if you look at today's action, right? If you look at today's action, and I'll give you some names to watch for tomorrow. If you look at today's action, a lot of names were super weak. A lot of names are super weak. Uh, the stocks that we identified, we talked about last night's video, they did very, very well, right? Let's talk about the pivots. Um, so let's talk about it. You guys remember snow? I even told you guys last night where, where that area is. If you, if you, if you go back to last night's video, I usually don't give prices to the general public, but I basically just said, Hey guys, snow got rejected 127 twice. There, there is no room for interpretation here. If snow could get back above 127, this thing could really go. Snow was awesome today. Congratulations to all you guys who caught snow. It took out the 127, went all the way up to 134.50s. Huge, huge move, right? NVIDIA. And NVIDIA never got up to the 49.70s. And that's the point. The longer a stock can't bust out of range, especially if the market is doing well, well, you have to start looking at both sides. Google never got to 182.50. You guys remember Microsoft? We were talking about Microsoft last night. It's getting super tight. Beautiful move today. Uh, 425 and 427 needs to confirm. Beautiful move on Microsoft. Excellent, excellent move on Microsoft. It took out the 25, took out the 27, and all the way went all the way up to 429.30s before turning around and going lower. And that's the point. When you have good stocks coming out of a range and they sell off into the back to the range into the close, that's when you have to start looking at both sides. But a beautiful move, absolute gorgeous move on Microsoft. Amazon, I didn't trade today. You guys remember last night on the video, I said, hey, you know, there's speculation that Bezos, that Bezos was going to be, um, you know, almost done, uh, almost done with uh, selling the stock. And then I kind of, I kind of talked myself out of the trade. And I said, well, wow, do I really want to if he's still selling more stock today, do I really want to be fighting with Bezos today? And I said, ah, I'm going to leave it alone. <sighs> Guys, look what, look what Amazon did today. It took out the 410. It only went to 415. That's it. I only missed a fifth, you know, $5 move on Amazon. Other than that, wasn't a big deal. Here was Tesla. Here was Tesla, guys. Uh, there was a pivot to the upside of Tesla today. There was a pivot to the downside of Tesla today. And there was a balance today in Tesla. And the moral of the story is, and I tell all new traders, don't fall in love with the stock. Fall in love with the channel. And Tesla gave us three beautiful, absolutely beautiful channels today. So here is the first one, right? Here is the first one. There's a sneaky area for aggressive traders. If you don't know what a sneaky area is, watch the PS60 workshops. Or if you come into the PS webinar, uh, we always talk about uh, sneaky pivots. Again, I'm not going to have too tired to go into it now. Uh, but there's a sneaky area for aggressive traders at 340. It needs to confirm. If it gets sold off at the open, we'll watch for obviously yesterday's chat. All these things came into play. So the first pivot was 340 on Tesla, right? So here's the 60 minute view on Tesla. Here's the 60 minute view on Tesla. You see this whole channel here? So there was a channel developing here, uh, 339.40, 339.70. So this is what we call a sneaky pivot. Once it got above the sneaky pivot, got a $4 move. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful four, four and a half dollar move on Tesla. That's part one, right? Part one. Second part, right? Second part was for experienced traders, right? For experienced traders, uh, 324 was the bounce. You guys remember yesterday when we were talking about the five day bounce? Well, Tesla bounced. I would say Tesla bounced. So here was the bounce. Here you're looking right here. You're looking right here at the the five minute. Uh, where am I? Here it is. Right here. You see it right here. So you're looking right here at the at the 60 minute bounce. It held right. I'm sorry. It's right here. It held and it was stupid. It held and it put up a ten dollar bounce before literally giving it up. Uh, giving it up. But a beautiful, beautiful bounce. And that's kind of my whole point. 
If it couldn't bounce aggressively, and granted, it's still up $6 from the bounce. The point is, if it does give up that bounce area that it reclaimed or defended today, Tesla could be in trouble. But again, let's see how it plays out uh, for tomorrow. And last but not least, uh, RGTI, uh, beautiful. Again, beautiful Microsoft pivot. RGTI, uh, 175 needs to build. Went to like 190. They were coming for the December uh, $2 calls. Keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. It's something to do with quantum computing. There was another stock. I forgot what the symbol went nuts on quantum computer. But give, you know, give, gave a 15 cent push on a dollar stock. Uh, not horrible. And that is it. So going into tomorrow, um, I am definitely, definitely watching a lot of names to the downside. Again, assuming they confirm. Uh, tomorrow we can go back to the rally mode and everything will be good. But there's a lot more names that close today towards their bottom of their channels than to the top of the channel. So you have to be very, very, uh, very, very diligent to understand that there's both sides of the market, guys. Um, market gave you, you know, the gods gave you two eyes, two ears, right? Two eyes, two ears, two hands, two feet. They gave you both sides of the market as well. And nobody's saying the market's going to go to zero. I'm just telling you is watch that five day because if the Qs give up the five day, everything's going to give up the five day with it. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night. And God's help, we'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.